Well, as we continue to track this virus, we want to introduce you to someone now who's been watching developments quite closely, but for a very different reason. Terry Chu is a mother. She's also an activist in Toronto, joins us right now in studio. So, Terry, good morning to you. Good morning. And, you know, I want to begin our discussion uh, with a tweet that you sent out, because I think this really addresses your concern as you watch the coverage and what's happening right now with the coronavirus. And you essentially tweeted about your fears of the racism that's related to the coverage and what people are saying about the coronavirus. Tell us a bit more about that. Well, a lot of us uh, have memories of what happened during SARS, uh, the backlash of that to the Chinese community. And um, at least in, in my circle of friends, we're mothers now. And it's a little concerning what may or may not happen uh, in the schoolyard, what our kids might be exposed to. So well, we are seeing it from a different perspective. We experienced one thing and now we're uh, afraid of having that repeat to the next generation. Yeah, and, and of course, like any other parent, you are concerned about what your child will face, uh, not to mention what you and, and other people might be facing. But what kind of reaction have you received so far? Because of course, you turn to Twitter to express this concern, a very public forum. Mm -hmm. What was the reaction to that? Interesting. Um, a lot of support, uh, a bit of racism. Uh, a lot of people are just grounded in fear. They have no idea what's going on, so it's much easier to make it, oh, something that they don't want to believe could happen here, and so they other it, right? And so when you other something, you start turning to things like, oh, it's because people are eating bats, it's because they eat snakes, it's because whatever, right? And so people just say whatever comes to mind because they are grounded in fear. And that's what we don't want to see um, our children uh, be on the receiving end of. Yeah, well, you know, we were talking about children here, and it was interesting, as you and I have this discussion, there was a, a statement that was sent out by the York uh, District School Board, and York Region is just north of Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, there is right now a petition circulated in York on social media where, where some people are asking that the board tell students who've been to China not to go to school for 17 days, essentially self-isolate, and this is about their concerns regarding the coronavirus. But look at this response. This is from the school board. They said to these individuals, individuals who make assumptions even with positive intentions of safety about the risk of others, request or demand quarantine can be seen as demonstrating bias and racism. What's your reaction to, to that message from the York District School Board? Good for them. I, I mean, if health officials say, look, uh, quarantine is probably the best way to go, then obviously as a community we don't want uh, to resist that. It's whatever the numbers and whatever the science says, right? It, it's important to go with with reality. Well, you can't fight science, right? Science doesn't care about your racial background or anything. So whatever health authorities are saying, that's obviously what we're going to take as best practice and recommendations. And so I'm really glad that the school board was pushing back on that because if it's not a helpful recommendation, then why are you putting students through this? Um, a lot of students, if they go to China, like they might not have been in the affected area or they, you know, they maybe weren't even in China and just assume that you were coming from that part of the world, right? So we don't want to put students through something as traumatic as a quarantine when it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. and, and to reiterate, every public health official in this country say the risk is very low. They need prolonged exposure uh, to someone who might be having it. And right. again, we only have one confirmed case, mm -hmm. one presumed case, uh, one patient in isolation, the other patient self-quarantining. Yeah. Uh, but uh, part of this, as you said, has to do with what you experienced during the, the era of SARS, some seven years ago. Uh, let's go back then. Uh, we heard a lot of fear expressed during that moment in time. Mm -hmm. What was the effect of the SARS fear to your family? Well, at the time, my family owned a small business in London, Ontario. I grew up in London. Uh, my dad ran a restaurant there, and it was quiet. You know, everyone was afraid. Everyone was worried that, oh, if we eat at a Chinese restaurant, maybe we'll get SARS, we don't know. And so these things have a lot of impact on the small business community, uh, no matter where you are, but particularly in the smaller centers. I mean, I know in Toronto during that time, everybody was impacted. I remember, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, Summerlicious and Winterlicious was born out of SARS, right, to get people going to the restaurants again. And so everybody was impacted. But in the smaller communities, I would say that the Chinese folks were hit doubly hard. And you have to remember immigrant communities, we tend to work these jobs because we come over here, uh, they come uh, with whatever credentials they may or may not have. It's still very hard to get hired in whatever profession you came from. So these people end up working in service industries, in the food industry. And so that livelihood got choked off for quite a while while 
the outbreak was still being contained. So it hurt. It hurt the community quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I, rem I remember at the time, Prime Minister Kretchen uh, eating at a restaurant in Chinatown in Toronto just to make a yes. point that people shouldn't be fearful uh, as they were at the time. You now have two young kids. Mm -hmm. What are your fears for them? Thankfully, mine are so young that uh, I'm not too, too worried about what they may or may not hear right now. I don't think they'll understand it. My fears for the ones that are a little older, uh, that maybe the eight-year-olds, the 10-year-olds that may hear things in the schoolyard, the bullying. Uh, you know, I had a Racist friend. Racist bullying. Yes. I, I had a friend uh, who was teaching piano during the SARS era, and some high school kids drove past and yelled, SARS, you know, out the window at her. And that's the kind of stuff that we want to avoid. Uh, there's no need for that. Uh, I, I mean, kids will be kids. Kids will do dumb things. But those are the type of things that you hope in this day and age that we don't see a repeat of. You know, Terry, that is an important message to be sharing at this time. So we so appreciate your time today. Thank you for that. Thank you. And Terry Chu is a mother and activist in Toronto.